How you doing? How's it going? Doing well or yourself? I'm doing well, doing well. We're here with defensive back Mike Sanders today. And Mike, I can imagine you've dreamed of this moment for a very long time, walking into a national championship game for I have, yeah, you're right. Um, and, you know, it feels good to finally be here. Uh, it's, you know, kind of surreal knowing that, you know, this is my last time I'll ever be able to, you know, be in this be venue, be a part of, um, you know, uh, be, be at a, you know, college, university, you know, with these guys. And, you know, this is what I came back for, like I've mentioned before. Pretty quick, you know, uh, the turnaround was very fast. We, you know, got back to Michigan Tuesday morning. Um, and then, you know, we're in the building, you know, Wednesday watching a Washington Husky film. So, like I said, pretty fast. You guys had a big challenge facing Jalen Milrow in Alabama. How different is the challenge now going up against Washington and Michael Penix Jr.? Because they seem like two totally different types of players. Uh, yeah, you know, Michael Penix is a quarterback who will dice you up. He'll, you know, pick you apart with the ball in the air. You know, he'll find the open receiver. And he trusts his receivers. He'll throw the 50-50 ball up there to those guys. And, um, you know, he does a good job getting the ball out with pressure in his face. So, you know, it's a great challenge for our D-line, again, to, you know, prove that they have a really good pass rush and a great opportunity for the DBs to show that, you know, we can cover those guys. You guys are coming into this game with some momentum, though, with that fourth down stand against Alabama. How much confidence does that give you when you have that type of performance coming into a big game like this? Uh, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, our confidence comes from that game alone. Definitely feels good knowing that we're able to, you know, put on that type of performance defensively, offensively, um, you know, special teams as well. You know, a few things to clean up as always. But I think we've been a confident team all year. We know we believed in ourselves. We've trusted our, in each other, trusting in, you know, the program. Um, and, you know, that's what we've continued to do. And, you know, that's what's going to allow us to continue playing confident as we've, as we've been. No, not really. I, I don't. I don't think about it like that. Yeah, I just you know focus on it right now. I'll I'll reflect on it when it's all said and done. As a guy who's been a Michigan man through switching positions in your college career, the team, the team, the team comes first. What would it mean to bring this program the national championship for the first time again? It would mean everything. Um, you know, I wanted to be a part of the class that was able to do so. Uh, like I mentioned to you, you know, a few of us came back for this reason to say that you know we were a part of the team that won a national championship, and you know to be one of the leaders on this team to do you know to get that accomplished, um, you know it would just it would just feel good to be able to get that done, and you know that's what that's the goal, that's what the goal has been all off season, and um, you know we're we're here, we're here, that's what we want to do. I definitely believe that we had the talent, we had the right guys. We just didn't have, you know, the right mindset around that time. Um, but, you know, with everything, you know, we had, we had the, like I said, we had the right people. Um, we had the right coaches. It was just things that needed to be changed mentally. And, you know, with Coach Herb, um, you know, the training that he's been able to do for or put us through, through workouts, the mental training, the mental aspect of all that stuff is what's allowed us to get over that hump. Just, um, I think we got a lot closer throughout the years uh, after that 2020 season. Um, you know, we became more of a team. I think that going through that adversity allowed us to grow in different areas. It feels good. Um, you know, it's, it's what you work for. You know, every I'm pretty sure every college football team in the offseason tells themselves that, you know, I believe we're good enough to win a national championship. The difference is the work that you put in every single day. It's the consistency you have throughout the offseason, throughout the season. It's, you know, the sacrifices you make. And that's the thing that this team, that's what we've done. We've sacrificed. We've put the hours in. We've put the time in film study, um, you know, work in the weight room. And we've just dedicated this season to winning a national championship. Um, you know, we've trusted in each other. We believed in each other. We believed in our coaches. And I believe that when you have a team that, you know, has those two things where, you know, you love each other as a team, you love your coaches, then, you know, you could end up in a position like this. Do you ever think you play him for a national 
Uh, no, I didn't think we'd ever play each other in the national championship. Yeah, that's my guy. You know, I, I actually I was speaking to him yesterday. That's really one. Of, that's one of my close friends. Um, you know, we're real cool, brother and mine. Uh, you know, I, I wish him the best always. When he left, I wished him the best. You know, when he was here, I was happy for the things that he was doing while he was here. From the outside, to look at their receivers and your secondary it seems like a giant battle. Does it look? Does it feel that way to you? Um, I think any team that has a good receiving core is a good opportunity for any team that has good DBs. Um, you know, we play Alabama, they had good receivers. We, you know, anybody, like I said, if you have a good receiving core, or just a team that has a good quarterback, you know, that's a good challenge for any team that has good DBs. So, you know, I can't wait to go against those guys. So, Mike, moving from the offensive side of all playing wide receiver and now in the secondary, how has that helped your preparation, especially for a game like this? I would just say it helps, you know, with being able to anticipate, um, you know, knowing down the distances, um, you know, knowing tendencies, you know, coming from the receiver side, understanding what receivers may like when, you know, a corner is pressed or a corner is off. Um, I think me being able to, you know, bring that to the defensive side of the ball allows me to see things and not guess, but like I said, anticipate. And then, of course, knowing my game plan, knowing, you know, where I'm supposed to be, what spots I'm supposed to be in, my zone drops, understanding my leverage and man, um, definitely, you know, helps me eliminate certain things. Mike, when you, when you come, to, come to college under the goal to playing that championship winning or championship, now that it's here, what is this moment like for you to be able to experience all these things in the Houston? Um, it's it's a it's a wonderful experience. I'm definitely gonna you know soak everything in, live in the moment. Um, but you know the goal, the the main goal is to win a national championship. So definitely not gonna allow you know myself number one, and then as a leader of this team, not gonna allow anybody else to get distracted by anything that's going on around us. Um, because you know it's been a one track mind all season, and that was to you know it started with beating Michigan State, beating Penn State, beating Ohio State winning the Big Ten, winning the playoff game. Now our last goal is to win a national championship, and that's what we're here to do. Hey, Mike, uh, I, hope, I hope you haven't been asked this, but maybe you have. So much experience on both teams, uh, with you being a fifth year. Uh, how do you think that dynamic has led to maybe both teams getting to this point? I would just say, you know, you when you have an experienced team, um, you're allowed to – you have more leadership, and, you know, that's – we have leaders that are six years, leaders that are fifth years, leaders that are fourth years. Um, and I think when you ha have a team that's full of leaders, it allows younger guys to, you know, bring in and understand that, all right, these guys, this is how they, this is how they go about their business. Um, so I need to understand that I can't distract them from what they're doing. I have to live up to what they do. And so that expectation is set from day one. And the second they see that, it's like, okay, they start becoming leaders in their own ways as well. And so now you have a team full of leaders, a team full of mature men, um, and I think that's what this team is. I would just say is you know it comes down to making sure you don't leave anything up to you know don't leave don't have any regrets when this is over. Um, you definitely want to pour everything you have, uh, you know, empty your tank. That's you know one of the things I've been saying to the guys is you know there's nothing else after this. You know what wouldn't you do? And that was a message that you know Will Johnson said, Coach Minner said. Um, you know what wouldn't you do up to this point? Like you know we're here now. Like find any and everything you can do to help us accomplish our goal. Um, and just, you know, leave it all out there come Monday. That I've done? Um, I mean, I think I've pretty much been doing the same things I've been doing, but just, you know, a little, just doing a little bit more. You know, that's on-field time, in the film room time, more recovery, just making sure that come Monday I'll be able to be the best version of myself. Mike, with um, your career in Michigan, you've obviously played against a lot of fantastic wide receivers in the Big Ten, but what jumps out at you about, you know, the trio, tight end even that you're going to be facing at um, 
Washington, and how much are you looking to game film from games like Arizona, things like in earlier games of the season when you know, they were kind of contained a little bit more in the passing uh, I would say their ability to track the ball down the field. Um, they make a lot of contested catches. They run routes very well. Um, you know, they're fast guys. So, uh, you know, like I, like you said, you know, we've seen, you know, great talent from, you know, receiver receiving cores before. I think, you know, we had, we're able to be prepared for this game through playing Maryland, you know, a team that, you know, attacked us in the air. You know, uh, Tagovailoa was a really good quarterback, left-handed quarterback. We haven't seen any other left-handed quarterbacks. You know, now we have Penix. Um, you know, they had good receivers. Ohio State had good receivers. Um, and, you know, tight end-wise, you know, they have a really good tight end. I felt, you know, 84 from Alabama was a good tight end. I felt uh, a few other teams we played had good tight ends. But, um, you know, for us, it's just going to come down to, you know, staying technically sound, staying fundamentally sound, being where we need to when, you know, the ball is in the air, um, you know, being our right, being in the right zones and not giving up, you know, any easy plays, you know, making sure that we contest every catch or every pass, I mean. Um, not giving up easy, you know, easy throws. Don't allow, you know, Penix to take easy access and just, you know, make the easy one. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good game. Uh, I would just say, just don't panic. Um, you know, don't give up on the play. You might think that the ball is not coming because of, you know, you're not near the, you're away from, you know, the passing strength. But, you know, nine times out of ten, you don't know. So just, you know, stay on your man. Don't panic. And when the ball is coming to them, you know, they draw a lot of PIs. And that's because when the ball is in the air, a lot of DBs panic. And that could be through double moves. That could be because they don't know where the ball is exactly. But, um, you know, as long as you're in phase or even if you are out of phase, just, you know, don't panic, get back in phase, play the hands. Mike, how much better have you gotten as a football player and how much has player development been part of Michigan's success? Um, I think, you know, every day I'm doing whatever I can to get better. Um, and you said, what was the second part of that question? Uh, just everybody growing. You know, you guys uh, probably have seen, like, we don't have a bunch of five stars. I think we have more four stars. We definitely have more four stars than five stars. But our three stars and two stars, like, we have a lot more three stars and two stars than we do five stars and whatever. Um, I feel like when you're able to develop, development isn't just, you know, what you do on the field. It's how, how well you know the game, um, your knowledge of football. And I think when you have a bunch of guys who know football very well, it creates, um, you know, a, a, a very good football team. And not because they're just super talented. It's because they know what they're doing out there. They could be on-field coaches. And I feel like that's what we have a lot of here. Um, Mike, Mason mentioned the other day that this team, as you look at them, it is similar to Ohio State 21 with the receivers, the quarterback, the offense. I mean, when you're seeing those guys on film, is it the same type of – I think we just do the same things that we've been doing, you know, having a D-line that creates a really good pass rush, um, you know, linebackers who can also join that pass rush and also drop in coverage, and then DBs just, you know, playing sticky coverage, um, not giving up any easy throws. Does a, how does a left-handed quarterback change the game for a defensive back? I mean, or does it? I mean, in terms of how he drops back or how you see the football coming off the game? Um, I'm not. I'm not really too sure. You know, I, my job isn't to watch the quarterback stare him down, so um, I shouldn't really have too much vision on, you know, what his drop looks like. Other than if I'm reading a quick game or a drop back pass, of course, or RPO. But um, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if, if it does change that much. Expecting a child, you know, how has that kind of shaped your outlook on life and football and everything? And what are you most looking forward to about being a father? Um, I just know that it gives me an extra reason to want to be great. Gives me extra motivation, um, knowing I have a a little person, a little person on the way. Um, definitely super excited to be a father. I can't wait. You know, I've seen so many great fathers around me, so many great examples of fathers, and I just know how special it is to have a child of your own. So I'm definitely 
excited to do everything I can to, you know, give my little girl the best life possible. Um, yeah, definitely still very uh, business trip minded, you know, not allowing ourselves to get distracted by anything. Um, the difference, I'm not sure what the difference is, but uh, I would say this team, you know, Team 144, we're just very focused, um, you know, very locked in. We've been locked in since January, um, you know, after losing to TCU. And, you know, we just a team that's hungry and just, you know, we've been doing anything and everything to make sure that we get this thing done. The unique thing about it, um, and I'm not sure if it's technically like considered unique. I just think the the recipe to everything it is that we do is that we love each other. You know, this is an unselfish team. Everyone's happy for each other's success. You know, the guys like, you know, you see guys like Blake, you know, who can easily be very big headed and you know, hey, I'm on top of the world. But no, he's treats each other. He treats everyone on this team, you know, with respect, uh, with love. Um, and, you know, no one puts themselves before anybody. It's, you know, it's always the next man before. Like, we're very selfless on this team, and that's because we have a very selfless head coach. That's how Coach Harbaugh is with us. He treats us as his own sons, and I think it's easy to have love for each other when, you know, your coach loves you. Like, the general media consensus is that this Washington team resembles 2021 Ohio State, right? Uh, Michigan defense built to stop that. Has that been discussed, and has that film been looked at in this week leading up to this game? Yeah, we've, we've talked about the fact that, you know, they're very similar to that 21 Ohio State team. In a sense, they have a very good quarterback, um, a very good uh, receiving core. Running back or the run game is not as, you know, I wouldn't say is as similar as to what that Ohio State um, run game was. But, you know, they definitely have a good running back as well. Um, but, um, you know, like I said, it's going to come down to us, you know, doing the things that we do um, and just executing at a very high level. Given what happened with the Big Ten this year and the conference coming in, stepping in, stepping in, stepping in coach, all that, is it, how does it feel now to have the conference be able to like puff their chest out and say, oh, look, Michigan, oh, the Big Ten, beat the SEC, or kind of claim your success? Uh, you know, all, all, season, all season long, we've never worried about the outside noise. I know there were some things out there saying, oh, Michigan might leave the Big Ten because of what happened or whatever, but we don't care about that stuff at the end of the day. It's, it's, every, it's everybody inside of Shen Beckler Hall that we care about. That's the voices that matter to us. Um, and I think having that mindset is what's allowed us to be here today. Hey, Mike, I know the is it's all about the Washington does with all the motion switching guys to the side and all the formations. Have you faced a team that does as many three snaps as Washington? And is that difficult to process when, I mean, I counted one time this year there were as many as nine. Uh, yeah, we've definitely played a few teams who do, you know, pre-snap shifts, pre-snap motions. Um, I don't think we've, we've played teams who will shift, motion, motion back, and then motion again. Um, but I think it's a challenge to, you know, being able to stay disciplined, having your eyes in the right place, um, you know, not being able to see the final formation in it and then anticipate what you'll get out of that formation. Um, I guess, you know, what you can say about that is it's not about how it starts, it's about how, how it finishes in terms of how the formation uh, begins and ends. Um, I don't think it's, you know, you just have to know what your call is, number one, communicate, and then, you know, you go from there. As long as your communication is on point, then, you know, the processing becomes easier. But if you look at the formation and then you, you put yourself in a state of mind where you're guessing, not anticipating, it's a lot different. Michael Penix? Michael Penix you said trying to cover him? Just contest his throws. 
Uh, don't allow those receivers to have any easy catches. You know, they're really good with, you know, playing, having late hands with the ball. Um, you know, they won't put their hands in the air. They'll run, they'll run, they'll catch it at the very last second. They'll, you know, speed release you when you're pressed. Um, they run really good routes. But just, you know, not allowing him to make any easy throws. You know, I, I know our D-line is going to get up there, you know, put pressure on him. Ladies and gentlemen, um, please stand But, you know, he's still really good when pressure's in his face. Podium. He's able to, you know, take his eyes from one side of the field to the other side of the field and, you know, make a throw in a blink of an eye. So I just think, you know, not giving him no free access, not allowing him to make any easy throws.